This is part two of uh, assembling your DDT640 and or your DDT660. We've already assembled the inside cradle, the part that your camera or whatever your device you're wanting to tilt uh, uh, will mount to. And so now we're going to build the, uh, the actual the cradle mount here. And so we'll go ahead and begin. First thing you want to do is actually put on the top mount. Once again, you want to grab your 632 by 3 8 inch Phillips head screws. There will be four of these that go in here, just like this. Get those. We can go ahead and tighten these all the way down. There you go. Put the other one on here. You want to put the hair cell, obviously as you can see here, the plastic has two texture surfaces. Um, and so you want to put the hair cell, it doesn't really matter, but um, you want to really want to put the hair cell toward the outside, that way your uh, the aluminum parts have a nice flush or even surface to mount against. So there you go, so that's what we've got so far. Next what we're going to do is we're actually going to bolt our gear motor to our gear motor mount. And obviously with, this, with these systems you can use a variety of different gear motors. Um, our mounts can support, they obviously have multiple different holes for various gear motors, but I went ahead and choose, uh, chose a uh, 3 RPM uh, 3 to 12 volt gear motor. You can also use our precision gear motors, our robot zone precision gear motors as well. Work really well with these systems. So, but went ahead and chose this motor. So we're going to go ahead and bolt this in. And you may need to rotate your motor amount around several ways to be able to figure out which holes line up. But so we need to do here. And so there we go. And you want to grab the small little three millimeter diameter Phillips head screws. Put those in there like that. There we go. And one thing too, one little hint when you're putting this thing together is depending on what kind of gear motor ratio you have, you may need to apply some power to it because the flat on the shaft, you actually want to um, be um, actually perpendicular to the direction of the, of the tap holes on these mounts. So you want the flat in the shaft, like I said, you can see the flat there. Um, you want it to actually be perpendicular um, uh, a right angle as well to the tapped holes. So that will just make, when you're trying to reach in and actually run the uh, set screw down on the flat of the shaft, once it's all assembled, it's, it'll be much easier. So and you'll, you'll see here very soon uh, what I mean by doing that. So next we want to do is uh, we want to go ahead and put the standoffs in our tilt here. So let me put these in right here, spread that apart. This is something that we should have done just a little bit ago, but I completely forgot. So. Easy, easy enough to come in and do later on. So we'll put these in real quick. Go. And these just help support the, um, obviously the, the base of the, of the tilt here. There we go. Go ahead and tighten these in. And put the last one in here. Oops. There we go. Make sure these are all nice and tight. I always like to double check things. There we go. Okay, so that is, that is done now. So let's go ahead and uh, put them in our other system here, our outside component. Put these in here. Around. There you go. And last standoff going in. Okay. And there we go. There we go. Those are in nice and tight. Let's double check here. Should be good to go. All right. So now we can go ahead and put our Actually, we want to go ahead and slide our, this is a six millimeter hub. We're going to go ahead and slide that over shaft, obviously at the, of the, over the gear motor shaft. Make sure that the set screw is right on top of the D, or the flat in the shaft, I should say. So slide that right on like so. We want to make sure the flange section is pointing away. Um, next, we're going to go ahead and slide our ball bearing part over our tilt mechanism. So it just goes right over. Make sure that the ball bearing section where the ball bearing presses in is facing towards the outside. And obviously you can drop this in any different direction, but we're going to go ahead and drop it in this, this way here. And we're going to go ahead and put in the screws here. 
And as you can see, there's no right or wrong way to assemble these. You know, they're, it's pretty easy. You can actually access, you know, all the different areas very easily. So, but this is this is the way we assemble them most of the time. So, now as you can see here, there's multiple holes um, on the outside pieces, and that will allow you to, depending on your camera or or whatever type of device you have in here. You can actually raise and lower it both the on the outside um, section or on the inside section. You can raise this up, you can lower this down. So but you can play around with that a little bit later if you need to, depending on your application. So next what we're going to do is we're going to actually grab the four long screws here, 632 by one inch screws. We're going to go ahead and slide them through the hub here and actually right through this quarter inch hub spacer here. So actually we're going to run all four of them through. There you go. So those are sitting there waiting. So next we're going to go ahead and put our motor in. So we're going to want to put our motor in these outer, outer ridge holes right here. So here we go. Grab our screws over here. Slide this through. And that in there. Put our bottom one in. We're not going to tighten these up at all at this point, so I'm going to leave it kind of loose because we've got to slide our shaft through here. Okay, next what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and like I said, make sure that hub is lined up. We're going to go ahead and slide that hub out a little bit, line these holes up here. Go ahead and screw that in like so. And they're going to go all the way through the hub there, all the way through the, that one in right there. Have a little shorter screwdriver would help. I'm going to go all the way through that spacer. Oops. Not tighten these up all the way. That way I can get that one through. There we go. As you can see now, we're going to tighten those all up, all four of them. There we go. Now we can actually slide this cradle back and forth so you can slide it and space it out however you need to. Make sure both sides are even. Now obviously we have the flat on the shaft right there so we can go in and set that set screw right on the flat of that shaft. Next, the last thing we want to do is actually we have a little uh, shaft collar here. It's got a little lip on it. That lip wants to go towards the ball bearing. That way it runs right on the race of that ball bearing. That's going to hold the other side in. Flex that in a little bit. Come with our Allen wrench here. Clamp that down. And there you go. I could, uh, if this wasn't such a low RPM, or actually, excuse me, I need to actually tighten these down. Once again, forgetting here. Tighten these last screws down on either side. And what I was about to say was, uh, I've, I've got a pretty low RPM. This is a six, or excuse me, a three RPM uh, 3 to 12 volt gear motor so I can't physically rotate this around back drive this motor it's too low geared um, but if it was a higher geared motor obviously I'd be able to rotate this around but you can run this obviously in various positions you can bring this around in a hanging position or an upright position neat thing about these as well is that this uses all of our Actibotics, our new line of Actibotics components. And so um, everything, all the hubs, everything's uh, Actibotics. So you actually, whatever you build, if you build a robot structure, whatever you do, this will work and bolt right to whatever you've built out of Actibotics, whether it's our channel, our tubing, our clamps, anything, you name it, it'll bolt right to it. So anyway, there you go. Um, if you have any questions, you're more than welcome to email our tech department.